Well, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to our cyber program information night. My name is Bob Sokolowski. I'm the assistant superintendent for the school district. Uh, and I am here tonight joined by our lead administrator for our cyber program for secondary students, uh, Dr. Kristen Barnello. Uh, she is also joined by her support team, uh, Ms. Chelsea Samarone, our cyber coach, and our instructional technology coordinators, Dr. Mary Beth Clifton and Mr. Christopher Cromwell. Uh, we are gonna jump into the program in just a minute. We have a lot of detailed information for both middle school students will be specific and will also be specific for our high school students. Um, but I do just want to start with a little bit of history about our program. Uh, this is our, our first year of the Westchester Cyber Program, uh, but we actually began planning a number of years ago, and actually in the summer of 2019, if you can remember pre-pandemic times, uh, the Westchester Area School District was committed to launching its cyber program uh, for the year that we're in, but it was supposed to be just grades six and nine, and then we were going to develop the program for the next uh, three years so that we would have a, a a diploma program for students from sixth grade through ninth grade. Uh, and the vision for the school district was really twofold. Uh, we just see that there, there is a need for the cyber flexibility for students, uh, that there are a lot of various interests and pursuits for our students that they need, their families need that kind of flexibility. And then especially at the high school level, we recognize uh, that in terms of improving our high school scheduling options by offering a, a cyber option for our students, uh, that permits students to get involved in things such as job shadowing, dual enrollment, uh, internships, uh, many activities that we know are critically important uh, towards developing those post-secondary opportunities. Um, so why, why the Westchester Cyber Program? We, need, we know that there are many families out here tonight on our program that are considering perhaps other cyber options besides the Westchester Area School District. Uh, but what I wanna say to, to all of our families uh, the number one benefit of the Westchester Cyber Program is being 100% a part of the Westchester Area School District. All of our, our courses are taught by Westchester Area School District teachers. Uh, it is the Westchester Area School District really award-winning curricular program. Uh, and then students have access to all of the benefits of the Westchester Area School District. Uh, and so whether that is being a part of gifted education, whether it's a student with an IEP, uh, whether it's a student has strong interest in our music and our art programs, uh, athletics, uh, all of our, our cyber students are completely a part of the Westchester Area School District. Uh, and we actually like to not only build that cyber culture um, amongst our cyber students, but make sure that that connection to their home schools. Uh, so whether it's one of our, our three middle schools or uh, when students would graduate from the Westchester Cyber Program, you'll actually graduate with a diploma from Westchester East, Westchester Henderson, uh, or Ruston High School. Um, so those are just some of the, the strong benefits of being a part of the program. But let me uh, give our, ourselves an opportunity to hear from actually our Westchester Cyber students and what they have to say about our Westchester Cyber program. So what do you like most about the Westchester Cyber Program? Um, the thing I like most about the Westchester Cyber Program is the fact that it's asynchronous and the flexibility that I have to fold it around a hike if my family wants to take a hike or um, an event that comes up. Yeah, I agree. I really like the flexibility and I like that I'm able to structure my own time and have more time to do things I'm passionate about while also completing my schoolwork. What advice would you give to a Westchester cyber student? The advice that I'd give to a Westchester cyber student is to put your schoolwork before other um, activities that you have, but to also at the same time dive into things you're passionate about in school and extracurricular activities. Um, the advice I would give to a Westchester cyber student is to not be afraid to email your teachers and ask them literally any questions you have for that class. Um, they're really good with getting back as fast as they can once, as soon as they get a chance and, um, and answering your question.
Thank you. So that's just an introduction to our Westchester Cyber Program. Uh, as Dr. Sokolowski said earlier, my name is Kristen Barnello, and I am the supervisor of our secondary cyber program. Joining me tonight are key parts of our cyber leadership team. So you'll see Dr. Clifton and Mr. Cromwell, our instructional technology coordinators and administrators with the district. And Ms. Chelsea Samaroni is our cyber coach. Her main job is to work with students as well as their families to get acclimated to a cyber learning environment. It is quite different uh, as we're gonna talk through tonight. There are home supports, but also a lot of supports that we've built into our program to make sure that all of our students are successful. So with that, I wanna turn the program over to Ms. Samaroni to talk about the orientation process and how we are prepared to help your students and you as parents support your learners in the cyber program. All right, thank you, Dr. Barnello. So the, the great perk about our cyber program is that there is a central hub that we are calling the Cyber Center. It's located at Fugit Middle School. This is also what I call my main office. This is where you'll see me most days. So in the Cyber Center, students are encouraged to come and complete independent work to you know, just have a different place to work instead of just doing it at home. I know that's been a big, a big help for a lot of our students this year, especially as uh, as we're going to uh, get more kids in the building, you know, a lot of them are, are using the cyber center to uh, get acclimated to coming back into school. Um, we will eventually encourage uh, group projects too. Uh, we have students who can come in and, and collaborate with students because we're pulling from all of our secondary schools. There are many opportunities for students to work with other students across schools. Um, they can also uh, get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Uh, one of the biggest benefits of having me in my role is being able to meet with me when, for example, a student is working at their own pace. So, for example, if a student is coming in and they want to work on a math class that they have a couple of assignments that they, they want to just work on together and have that extra one-on-one -on -one support, we'll do things like that. And, and just really cultivating that space to, to grow our community as a cyber program. So with a student orientation going into cyber, luckily, you know, going into this year, we, we were not able to do some of those building community activities that we anticipated doing, but hopefully as conditions improve that we will, you know, make sure that we create more opportunities to do that. Within Schoology, that's where the main student orientation is going to be. Students will have access to what is called the Schoology backpack. It basically will give an overview of many of the uh, tips and tricks, but also the main tools that students will use in Schoology. One thing that I tell students and parents all the time is that this will be, since the program is primarily on Schoology, this will be the first time where you're, you're using it as your main platform to learning. There won't be as much of that going back and forth. So it's really important that students know how to navigate Schoology, but also for parents as well. The other thing that we, we do within a, a cyber student orientation is going through cyber time management. A lot of questions that we get asked go, uh, go along with the lines of what does a cyber school day look like? And so really because of the flexibility, it's really important to make sure that students have the ability to know how to manage their time in the way that works best for them. So that might look like checking into Schoology, how you're doing that. When I do my coaching sessions with students, we'll go through a number of tips and tricks that even I myself have learned in, in the first year of this program, and then knowing how to reach out for help when needed. So how does attendance work in the cyber program? Oh, can I go back? There we go. So how does attendance work in the cyber program? Uh, I am also, besides being cyber coach, I, I do wear many hats, but the other hat that I wear is homeroom teacher. So each student will have a homeroom that is designated to their specific home school, the school in which they're rostered. Um, I basically will push out an attendance quiz where students are required to check in by 1045 daily. It's just a simple one question quiz. I get that and then I send it back to the attendance secretaries at their home school. I work it very closely with the attendant secretary. So any absence notes, whether it was a planned absence or, or not, they will go through your building and we work to coordinate that. This is only one portion of our attendance. Uh, this is the one that students will see on a daily basis and, and we will work to build that routine with them. But the other portion of attendance is 
with work completion. Work completion is a measure of the cyber program. We will put interventions in place if we are noticing that one of these attendance procedures is off balance. Um, but we do want to make sure that just because students are checking in for attendance, that they're still completing their work. Uh, to give you a parameter of what that looks like, the attendance course, or excuse me, the attendance quiz counts for attendance in all cyber courses in a student's schedule. There may be times where a student is enrolled in a synchronous course, so that means that the course is happening live in the building. That is the only exception to what the attendance quiz counts for. When they are enrolled in a synchronous course, they are required to attend that course as if they are attending a regular course in the building. Um, you know, something we've obviously had to work through this year, considering that since we've all been on, on Zoom for the most part, there's been a little bit of working through that. So the, there are opportunities to make sure that we're, we're working through that. It would just depend on your child's schedule. The next, great next question here, who will be my child's counselor? As Dr. Sokolowski said earlier tonight, you are a part of the Westchester School District. So in terms of a lot of the personnel and who would be on your child's learning team, you would have the same counselor as if your child was in the building. In sixth grade, the counselors are assigned to each grade. So you're, when you are assigned the counselor in sixth grade, they would move up through eighth grade with you. When they get to the high school level, they are broken down by alphabet. And so you would still remain with the first um, counselor that you would get in ninth grade, and they would move up through you with the, by your senior year. So a little bit of a difference between how the middle school counseling and the high school counseling works, but you would still have access to that person on your team in the building. Um, some of the quotes here, two of our great counselors, one from the middle school and one from the high school, have done a great job working with our cyber students, helping them in part with me with those executive functions. Uh, skills, but also helping them feel more connected to their buildings. And then finally, parent support. Parent support is one of the biggest parts of our cyber program in terms of knowing where to do. We talked a little bit about how to get the students oriented, but parent support is, is vital as well. Uh, we will have a parent orientation night to go through reviewing of courses, reviewing Schoology, and, and giving you all of those resources to make sure that you are supported. I am always available for one-on-one -on -one support to our parents just as much as our students. So if there's ever a question about something that you or your child are experiencing, I'm one of the point people for that. And then we also have a parent support website, which will give you video tutorials for Schoology. It will also give you access to our technology support and infrastructure, which will give you access to wonderful colleagues here like Mr. Cromwell and Dr. Clifton, who will help you with any kind of technological aspect that you need. So with that being said, I will pass it back to Dr. Barnello. Thanks so much, Chelsea. Our support systems are really robust, and I know there's oftentimes a lot of anxiety with moving into a cyber learning environment, but rest assured we do have supports in place for all of our students. And then one of the greatest things is because we are such a robust community and we do have a multitude of supports in our building, that as a member of the Westchester Area School District, your student has available to them all of the supports from mental health and executive functioning to study skills, including activities and sports, which allow students to become part of that community as well. So now I just want to take a moment just to remind everyone that we are taking questions through the Q&A format, and then our moderators will be responding to them. But I do want to just dive a bit more into our curriculum overview. So on your screen right now, you'll see our middle school progression and middle schools in the Westchester Area School District are grade banded for 6th, 7th and 8th. You'll notice that the students have all of their core classes as well as a range of unified arts classes, including music, art, computer science, technology education, and family consumer sciences. The courses that are bolded and have asterisks next to them are courses that are leveled. And that means that we group students homogeneously depending on their backgrounds and skill set uh, and their ability to achieve in different classes. The students access the same curriculum, but the depth of the curriculum, the pace at which the curriculum moves is tailored to meet each student's needs. So at the middle school level, starting in sixth grade, our courses are only leveled in English and math. That's the same for seventh grade. And then in eighth grade, science and social studies also have two levels to allow students who are ready for a little bit more rigor to move into that advanced honors level track. So that is our middle school curriculum. 
at middle school students are either completely in our cyber program or they're completely in person in our building. I do want to remind everyone that for next year, the district will not be offering a remote option for students and families. So families who do have medical concerns or are just not comfortable with being back in the building, the remote option would be the Westchester Cyber Program. Our high schools are structured quite differently. So for the high school cyber program, students have the option of either being full-time or taking some courses through cyber. A full-time cyber program, we are able to meet all the graduation requirement requirements. We offer a variety of elective courses for students in all different disciplines so that they can completely go from ninth to 12th grade as a fully online student, but still graduate with that Westchester diploma. And again, just to reiterate what Dr. Sokolowski said earlier, your students are still part of their home building. So if your child would have attended Henderson, they would still go to Henderson dances, they would go to Henderson's prom and ultimately Henderson's graduation to celebrate that accumulation of every, all the work they've done in high school. The high school program also offers a great level of flexibility where students can take one or more classes through our cyber program. This is great for students who are looking for internships, if they have an early dismissal because of other obligations, if they're looking to come into school maybe a little later, or whatever flexibility they might be seeking. So again, that's an opportunity for students at the high school level to get a cyber course experience similar to what they might experience in their post-secondary college and university as well. Right now, we are in the process of our course selection timeline. So this is our timeline for our high school students. The students who are currently enrolled in the Westchester Area School District, you can log in through Parent Portal to see what courses the students have requested or have been recommended for for the 21-22 school year. Mr. Cromwell, if you can go to the next slide. Thank you. This screenshot shows what the Parent Portal looks like and how to identify if a course is cyber. I know the screen looks a little small there, but if you look at the course number, any of our cyber courses start with a C designation of cyber. So it's not in the course name, but it is in the course number. If you ever have questions about if it is a cyber or a brick and mortar course, you can reach out to myself, Ms. Samaroni, or your child's counselor, and we can certainly assist you with that. We did wanna take a few moments today. Again, I do wanna remind that we are taking live questions through the Q&A format on the webinar but we did wanna address some of the questions that we are frequently asked. So the first question that we're often asked is about supports for IEP students. This would also apply for students who have a 504 GIEP or might have English language uh, supports in place as well. So we have a video here of Tara Rudder, who is our middle school case manager for our cyber program. Hi, my name is Tara Rudder, and I'm a middle school special education teacher here at Westchester Cyber. I work with students in grades six through eight. Most of the students I support attend at least one class with me. That may be a direct instruction class, a strategies class, or a study skills class. Unlike all of the other cyber classes, if a student is enrolled in a special education class, they do have synchronous class time. So they are required to attend the live class at the scheduled time. But for those students who are enrolled in only regular education classes, but still have an individual education plan, I check in with them to make sure that they are on the right track and receiving the supports they need. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us at WC Cyber. And we have special education Hi. teachers that, oh, that work with our students throughout both the second, the middle school and high school level. Uh, some of the courses are DI, direct instruction courses, others are social skills or study skills. And again, those classes are taught live by our teachers. The next question that we are often asked is why our program is designed to be mostly asynchronous. As Dr. Sokolowski alluded to earlier, we started planning for this program uh, I would say two to two and a half years ago. And at that time, we did not know that we were going to be launching a cyber program in the midst of a global pandemic where demand for cyber learning was gonna be at an all time high. At that point, we were planning for the students who needed greater flexibility than what a traditional school day would offer. And so our program allows for a tremendous amount of flexibility. 
We have students who are very competitive athletes that are either in the gym or at the pool. We have one student who is a very competitive diver. And so the cyber program allows her to spend more time focusing on that. She is seeking a D1 scholarship. So it really does allow her the time to focus on what she needs to and still meet her education requirements in a robust learning environment. We have students who have medical conditions. So either they can't physically come to a school building or they can't get up too early for the school day. So the cyber program allows them to have that flexibility. There are other students who have more travel requirements. And again, like we talked earlier, that flexibility and schedule for students who are looking for an internship or maybe just for a work schedule. I cannot stress enough, however, that even though we are asynchronous, you're not alone. So we do have all of those robust supports in place so if the student is struggling during the day, there are many avenues where they can reach out for help. They can reach out to their counselor, Ms. Samarani, our cyber coach, or their teachers who have their daily office hours. And those office hours are all posted in Schoology and they have that direct link there as well. So the teachers are available every day for the students, either for one-on-one -on -one or small group support. The other question we are often asked is about French and Spanish and why those are the only world language we offer in the cyber program. We do offer additional world languages in our brick and mortar setting. And again, just to re reiterate that at the high school level, students do have the ability to take some classes in person. So even if the rest of their classes are in cyber, but the student was really interested in taking German or Latin or Italian, they would be able to go into their home building to register for those classes and be able to take those. Uh, but to speak to us a little bit about world language in our cyber program, is Mara Claffey, one of our Spanish teachers. The world language courses offered by Westchester Cyber are unlike any program or app that you could purchase for your child. As seasoned language educators and world travelers, uh, we provide an individualized experience that meets the needs of each student. The flexibility of the cyber program also allows students to navigate through the courses at their own pace while also always having the opportunity to practice speaking, listening, reading, and writing in that target language. The feedback we provide as instructors is always detailed, specific, and culturally relevant so that students can get up from their computers and use the language immediately in their community or through travel. The cyber format also permits uh, a lot of self-correction and revision, which is in my opinion, a vital component of language learning. Um, and instructors and peers communicate uh, in the target language while developing also those technological skills in that target language as well. We are currently very lucky to be able to provide French and Spanish courses in Westchester Cyber, but we look forward to adding more courses as interest increases. Hasta luego. So again, what you'll notice in comparing the Westchester Cyber Program to some of the other cyber programs that you might be considering is that all of our instruction is provided by our Westchester Area School District teachers. So you know that you are getting that high quality level instruction in all of your courses. At this time, I wanna pass it over to Ms. Samaroni to address some of the other frequently asked questions of our program. Thanks, Dr. Oh. So Meg, the next part, we will go into uh, course differentiation. Uh, there, you will be able to take leveled courses as you go through the cyber program and, and go through some of those rigorous levels that will come along with, um, most, this will mostly happen at the high school level. The, there is some acceleration in, in middle school, but this more so goes into the, the high school level. So you'll see, that we, we offer it, we start at CCP, which is uh, college and career prep, go from honors and then accelerated honors into um, uh, advanced placement. So there are advanced placement courses in Westchester Cyber that go along with the uh, college board recommendations. And, and they, they, there will be some differentiation. They just might, we're, we're working on looking what those look like. So the next part about uh, frequently asked questions about science labs, because science labs are those one hands-on activities. Uh, one of our fabulous science teachers at, at the middle school, uh, Karen O'Neill will show us how to go about uh, how she does that in the program. Graders, I hope everyone is doing well, staying safe. 
Here are your science teachers for this year. I am Mr. Giordano, also known as Mr. G. I'm Mrs. O'Neill. And I'm Mrs. Eper. Uh, what the plan is today, and why we're taking this video, is because we're going to do a lab presentation for all of you. We're going to help follow the scientific method like we have been learning. And this actually lab has to involve a lot of different bubbles, so we're going to be blowing a lot of different bubbles in this. Mrs. O'Neill is going to give you an introduction, so here you go. Thanks, guys. All right, hi, kids. So when I was little, one of the things that I loved doing was blowing bubbles. And you would put that little stick into the jar, you pull it out, and you would blow bubbles, and then you're wondering, how big can the bubble get? And then you would dunk it back in, and you would slowly blow to see how big that bubble would get. Well, as I got older, I also knew that working with other like soap products, such as dish soap, shampoo, that also made bubbles. So then I'm wondering, what, Mr. Giordano is blowing bubbles? I wonder how big bubbles could get if I use something other than the bubble solution. So today, we are going to be talking about the materials. So in front of us, kids, we have three types of soap products. One is actual bubble solution, one is a dishwasher soap, and the other one is shampoo. Um, next on the table, we are going to use straws to blow our bubbles. These little guys here are fancy eyedroppers. They're called pipettes. And then we are going to be using a roller and recording on our data sheet. So the procedure here is what's going to happen today, kids, is Mrs. Hafer, Mr. Giordano, and myself are each going to take one solution. We are going to fill in uh, uh, the pipette up. We're going to pour it onto the table and we're going to take a straw and we're going to blow and create a bubble on the table. When the bubble pops, we are then going to measure. And kids, remember, we use the metric system. And we will be measuring in centimeters and millimeters, okay? And then, kids, anytime that you do an experiment, safety first. Remember, we do not eat in the lab and we always have to wear our safety goggles. And if I can just pop in, I'm sorry, Chelsea. A question that I'm often asked is what level of labs will my students be doing at home? Uh, I can promise you that there will be no dissection of frogs on the kitchen table. There will be no chemical spills in your house. Any of those we do online through cyber simulations through different programs. So if it's household materials like this, those would be conducted at home, but other ones would be done online through a simulation platform. And I was, I was just about to jump in. One of the coolest things that I've, I've gotten to do with uh, some of our students in the Cyber Center is go through some of their labs with them. Sometimes just being in that space when, when they're able to come in to do that with me, it's really cool to do that hands-on. Uh, Mrs. O'Neill does a great job engaging her students, which brings us to our next point about what social opportunities are available to students. This is something that we collectively as a team have certainly um, had more of an opportunity to discuss later in this school year, considering that conditions are seeming to improve and that we're able to do some more um, activities with our students. Um, going back to the point that each student is rooted back to their home school, these are all of the athletic directors at each of the middle schools and each of the high schools with their contact information. They have all of the information, whether it's sports, and, and students can also be a part of clubs. Any clubs that are offered through the building are offered through cyber. Students will be able to, uh, when we compile that information in the beginning of the school year, students will be able to find that information in their cyber homeroom with me. If they have any questions about it, I would, I would ask that they uh, contact somebody at the school specifically, but we can work together to find out who the advisors are or who the coaches are that they would need to get in touch with to make sure that they wouldn't miss that opportunity. I've heard some stories already this year about students uh, taking part in some of these activities and really appreciating that connection to their schools. So then the other part of the social activities go along with volunteer opportunities. We certainly strive to ensure that our students in the cyber program have the opportunities to become well-rounded citizens in our community. We're certainly lucky here in Westchester to have a wonderful community basis. Um, students in enrolled in the program can participate in volunteer opportunities uh, through, through the district, through some of those clubs that I was talking about. I know we have um, several community service organizations through the high schools. I know that certain students at the middle school levels do those as well. 
pictured here was an opportunity that we uh, opened to a, a select number of our cyber students this year was the Hanging of the Greens event in downtown Westchester. Every year, a group of community members will take uh, garland, a real live wreath garland, and hang it around the uh, shops and restaurants in the downtown area, typically right before the, uh, the, the holiday parade that takes part in the uh, beginning of December. So we had a number of students come out to do that. This is an event that I've personally participated in for years, but the fact that we were able to do it socially distanced and get some of our students involved with that was really neat. Um, so we're hoping to obviously open this opportunity up to cyber students more and, and certainly come up with other um, volunteer opportunities and, and support organizations that our students are passionate about. So then the final frequently asked question, and we last time we did a presentation like this, we were in the midst of uh, snow and not 70 degree or a pushing 70 degree weather like today, but are there snow days in the cyber program? So the cyber program does follow the Westchester Area School District calendar. And what that means is that when the students in the building have the day off, students in the cyber program have the day off. So if a snow day was to be called, not a remote learning day, the students in the cyber program would not be responsible for taking attendance. They do certainly have the ability if they, if they wanted to, to continue to work on their schoolwork because we offer that flexibility, but there, we do follow the calendar. So spring break, winter break, any uh, office holiday that we have off, students will, they can take those days off as well. Um, the 21-22 calendar was approved uh, back in December. So that is available for review on your website. When, as you're considering our program, you can certainly look at some of those dates and see how they align with, you know, some of that, some of those dates. And like I said, with, with cyber specifically, it would mean that they would not be responsible for taking attendance for that day. So are there snow days? Yes, there are. When, when Dr. Scanlon did call a snow day earlier that year, we said, you too can go out and, and have a snow day. We, we wanted to make sure that we gave that opportunity to take that break. So with that being said, I'm gonna pass it back to Dr. Barnell to uh, talk about the next steps. Thanks, I do wanna to highlight too that uh, Hanging of the Greens event was a something that we did with our student leadership committee. So we do have a group of students at all grade levels, six through 12, who we meet with monthly. Uh, we understand that this is our first year of the cyber program. We wanna hear from the students, what's working for them, what's not. So each month we invite a leadership speaker. So we want this to be a symbiotic relationship where the students are benefiting from the program, but also our, our program is also strengthening from the feedback we're receiving. So it's just another opportunity for students to become involved. So the next steps to enroll in the Westchester Cyber Program, it will vary if you're currently in our district or if you're new registration. So if you're currently in our district, you're gonna look at your course selection through the parent portal to identify if any of your courses that you've been recommended or requested for are cyber. Again, if you're not sure, you wanna look at that course number. Anything that starts with a C is a cyber course. And of course, if you have questions, reach out to myself. Ms. Amaroni or your child's counselor, and we can answer those for you. If you're new to the Westchester Area School District, you're gonna to go to our website, wcasd.net. You're gonna click on the new student registration icon and registration is currently open. So from there, you're gonna follow the prompts. That information is then fed to your home building, whatever building you would be assigned to for your attendance boundary. At that point, someone from the building will reach out to you to schedule an intake meeting where we would get all your paperwork. Those are all being done mostly still through Zoom right now, um, but it, part of that process is also meeting with your child's counselor to do the course to request and get their scheduled. At that point, you would want to communicate to the counselor and just confirm that you'd want to have the cyber program. Again, for middle school, students have to either be fully in the cyber program or fully in person. At the high school level, students can either be a full-time cyber student and take all of their courses in the cyber program, or they do have the flexibility to take some in-person and others online. So with that, I know there were some questions that were put into the queue that we did not respond to. Dr. Sokolowski, I believe there was one that you had earmarked to respond to. I did, and actually just the slide before you were able to answer that. Um, so. Uh, for that parent that asked the question about if we're not currently enrolled in the Westchester Area School District, how do we begin the course selection process? And as Dr. Barnello just shared in that previous slide, uh, you're able to go to the, uh, the district's page, 
main page and, uh, and click that register button and that'll begin the pre-registration process. Uh, and we will then, uh, as part of the registration process, uh, once we're able to get you registered, uh, the counselor will work with the family, work with the student on appropriate course selection for next year. Uh, and one thing that's great about this year, uh, we're already able to see uh, some of the enrollments, uh, not just for the core courses, uh, but also electives. Uh, and I'm happy to say that uh, it does look like we will have good enrollment in our cyber program next year, and that will afford a lot of um, good flexibility for students as far as their scheduling. I also saw another question as far as if there would be more live instruction this coming year. Uh, again, our cyber program at the secondary level is really designed to offer that flexibility. If we were to require more live sessions for our students, that would really negate that flexibility because then we would have to stay still on that traditional student day. What I would say is that all of our teachers are available throughout the school day for students who need that one-on-one -on -one support. There are some classes that some students may need to have in person. Um, I know speaking from my own experience, not that cyber existed when I was in high school, but had it, I would have preferred to have that live math instruction, just the way my brain works. I like to see and go through that problem with my teacher. Some of our students prefer to have a, at the high school level, those lab classes in person, so they can have that in-person lab experience, especially those that are looking to go into some of those science fields. And again, the same for world language. So I did have a student earlier this year who is interested in majoring in Spanish in college, and she really felt as so she wanted that in-classroom immersion experience. Um, so there are those different opportunities as well. But the live instruction, if we were to require more, would really take away from one of the greatest assets of our program, which is that flexibility and personalization for each student. Uh, Dr. Clifton, I know you were monitoring the Q&A. Did we miss yeah. any questions? No, we got them. We are good. Thank you. Thank you. So the last slide that you see here on your screen, you can certainly reach out to me at any time with any questions that you might have. If you have specific questions about your student or what your student schedule would look like or could look like, we could schedule a time for us to discuss that with one of the counselors. Uh, and again, our email address for any generic questions is wccyber at wcasd.net. You can also scan the QR code or use the link if you would like to schedule a one on one meeting with either myself or a member of the cyber leadership team. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This presentation will also be recorded and uploaded to our website in case you joined us late or if you wanted to review any of the information. Thank you so much for considering Westchester cyber program and I look forward to working with you and your children in the future. We did have one last question come in, but um, this person may not be here, but it was about, uh, are all classes in the high school asynchronous? And that was except for the direct instruction courses that were uh, the, the special ed, the study skills and the strategies courses, correct? For the most part, yes. We do have some classes that are more, that have synchronous components to that. Uh, if you would like me to look at your child's schedule, we can discuss that with, as a team to see what live classes there would be. There are also, even though it's mostly asynchronous, there are still times where the teachers might require live. Uh, so a world language teacher needs to assess the students speaking and listening skills. So they would need to schedule those times either for small group discussions or one on one assessments with their teachers. Thank you for letting me throw that in at the last yeah, second. Certainly. Absolutely. Yep. And just that reminder again that, that high schools are welcome to to take a combination of live courses and cyber courses uh, and what we recognize is that just offers so much flexibility for students and families uh, depending upon needs and interest. If any other questions come to mind this evening or throughout this week or in the coming weeks as you're considering Westchester cyber please do reach out to myself or any member of our team so we can help you in this decision. We know it is a tough one for families. We wanna make sure that you have all the information needed in order to make the best decision for your child. Thank you so much for joining us tonight.